Ukraine Independence Day overshadowed by fear of Russians' attack. Air raid siren sound across every meter of Ukrainian-controlled territory as the country marks six months since Moscow's invasion on a somber Independence Day, overshadowed by warning of brutal attack. The sense of foreboding was deepened by a warning from the White House that Russia had stepped up preparation to hold Sham Perfranda, an occupied region, as a prosecutor to act sensation and that they could begin in a matter of days or week. Joe Biden announced a further $3 billion in military aid, including anti-aircraft missile, artillery, counter-drones defenses and radar equipment as a show-off of U.S. support on Ukrainian's Independence Day, and senior politicians from across Europe have traveled to Kiev to show their support in person, despite security warning, including a U.S. call for its citizen to leave the country. The U.K. Prime Minister Boris Johnson, in his third visit to the country since Russia invaded, urged the international community to stay the course in its support for Ukraine. He also told the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Yelensky, that Ukraine can and will win the war. It is 31 years since Ukraine declared its independence from the Soviet Union and six months to the day since Russia launched a war that aimed to reserve that step away from Moscow's control. Many in the capital on Wednesday were taking shocks of both their achievement and losses. Few outside Ukraines, even among its allies, expected the country to hold off Russian's army so effectively, including in a decisive victory outside Kiev. But the country has paid a terrible human price for its success so far. Thousands of civilians have been killed since the war began on 24 February, while Ukraine has acknowledged 9,000 military deaths. Millions have lost their homes or been forced into exile, and there's little hope that the end to the fighting is in sight. I am constantly worrying and praying that our skies remain blue, and I understand that people are giving their lives for this, said Yana Payasnik, a choral singer in one of Ukraine's national corps. She was heading home after performing at Kiev's St. Sophia Cathedral. As I'm speaking to you now, I have goosebumps, People I know, my godson, is fighting at the front. There's no celebration today. I can't even believe that this is happening. Ukraine's President Vladimir Yelensky told his fellow citizen that their country was reborn when Russia invaded in a speech recorded on the steps of Capitol Monument to independence and aired on the morning of the anniversary. A new nation appeared in the world on 24 February, a four in the morning. It was not born, but reborn, a nation that did not cry, scream, or take fight, one that did not flee, did not give up, and did not forget, he said. He pledged to keep fighting until Ukraine had recaptured and annexed Crimea and occupy areas in the east. What for us is the end of the war? We used to say peace, now we say victory. A spokesman for Biden's National Security Council, Sean Kirby, warned that the Moscow was making preparation to state referenda in the occupied area. We have information that Russia continues to prepare to hold these shames referendum in Kyrgyzstan, Zakopizia, and the so-called Donetsk and Luna's People Republic, Kirby said. We have also learned that the Russia leadership has instructed official to begin preparing to hold a sham referenda, particularly in Kharkiv as well. And these referenda could begin in matters of days or week. In fact, we can see a Russian announcement of the first one or once before the end of this week. Kirby said that holding referenda intended to be a prelude to annexation, was proving a challenge to the Russian organizer in the face of near-total oppositions of Ukraine's population. Our information is that Russian officials are so concerned that there will be a low voter turnout that they are trying to work on, he said, but did not describe what those workarounds might be.
Yelensky also celebrated national unity, which has been bolstered by a powerful government messaging campaign. We are fighting against the most terrible threat to our statehoods, and also at a time when we have achieved the greatest level of national unity, Zelensky said. That's all for today. Thank you and goodbye.